Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. Hi, I'm Hattie Bryant. We've been on search for the best entrepreneurs in the country since 1994. Back in the fall of 1996, we found a little woman with big revenues. Like so many of us, she's a baby boomer, and today her business is ahead of the curve. She has a succession plan in place, and it's working. In the next 30 minutes, we revisit our first interview with the founder of Auntie Anne's Pretzels, and then return for her to tell us about her successful transition from day-to-day -day operations to her work now as keeper of the vision. Okay, are we ready to go? Ready to start? Hi, Trey. Every day, the doors open and the cash registers ring at nearly 800 locations of Auntie Anne's pretzels. Ann Byler has something customers want. They will spend $232 million to enjoy over 100 million pretzels per year. Her hand-rolled soft pretzels come in an assortment of flavors, including the traditional recipe with salt and this caramel almond I tried. Now, I want to see you eat your first bite. So I've never had one of these before. Well, it's, it's going to, you're going to be pleased, I think, if you like. This is a sweet pretzel. Of course, it looks fabulous. And this is low fat. Isn't it great? Mm -hmm. Low fat. Mm -hmm. The Dutch and German who settled this part of Pennsylvania have been enjoying soft pretzels for two centuries, but it took Jonas Beiler's dream in 1988 to open a counseling center and Ann Beiler's desire to fund her husband's nonprofit work to bring this delicious regional treat to the rest of the country and to the world. She's been baking since she was eight years old, and by the time she was 12, Anne's pies and cakes were sold at the Lancaster County Farmer's Market. When I was working for this other man as a manager at his uh, farmer's market, I uh, noticed that the pretzels were selling faster than anything else. And so I talked to him about just selling pretzels, and he's like, well, I don't think we can just, you know, I don't think there's enough money in just pretzels. So. After a few weeks or so of talking to him, I finally convinced him that, yes, let's get rid of the pizza and just two pretzels. And we did, and our sales continued to, to grow. This is my wonderful husband. I'm Mr. Andy. You, you're Jonas, Mr. Anne's, you're Anne's husband, also grew up in the kitchen where his duties included baking minister. breads, pies, cakes, and hand-rolled soft pretzels. And you're the one who found the secret to yeah. make the pretzel special. Yeah, <laughs> I, I brought the secret ingredient. She didn't want to let me put it in at first. See, she didn't want me to get, add that, and then I did anyhow after why, about three weeks. Why were, were you so pushy? Why did you just keep insisting? Well, because I knew it, it would work. From my uh, experience as a kid, I was uh, the baker in our house. Why did you all decide that the franchise format or model was the way to grow? <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, we originally started out with a licensing agreement with with a handful of people early in our uh, business experience, soon realized that uh, we are becoming a franchisor, whether that's whether we realized it or not. And uh, as we looked into where this was taking us, we realized we're full-fledged franchise and need to uh, uh, conform to those guidelines mm -hmm. and it it's was very good to do that. It's a great way to do business because you don't need a lot of capital up front. It's, you get a franchise fee so it kind of 
Uh, for us, it was just enough money to keep going each time we sold a franchise. Well, you know, it's, it's easy to dream. And I thought at one point, wow, I can do this and I can teach anybody how to make a pretzel or run a store. And so my husband set off on this little journey and uh, we did seven stores in 1989. Well, believe it or not, seven stores, it doesn't sound like a lot, but we were running ourselves ragged. Mm -hmm. And I began to realize that to dream is one thing, but to actually bring that dream into fruition takes an awful lot of hard work, per perseverance, patience, discipline, all the things that don't come easy for most of us. Do you write in your training manual, smile, be nice, give the customer what they want? Yes, yes, because I think if you put people first, then your profits will follow. Every franchisee attends a two-week course at Auntie Anne's National Training Center in Gap, Pennsylvania. like you doing in a place like this rolling pretzels. I'm having fun. I just wanted to change in my life. I wanted to, uh, to do something different and uh, I kind of got hooked on this just by the product. Did you get hooked personally eating the product? Yes. And you said, oh my gosh, these are so fabulous. I was actually on, uh, on business out in Los Angeles and I was flying back into Philadelphia and they routed me through the Pittsburgh airport and uh, I was changing planes to come back in and I was hungry. And I had a pretzel and I was absolutely amazed at it. That was in September and then two months later I was doing Christmas shopping in Macy's back in, in where I live in uh, Yardley, Pennsylvania at the Quaker Bridge Mall and I was getting rung up and a gal at uh, behind the register said uh, she couldn't wait to get off break to go get a pretzel and I said what are you talking about? What said, kind of pretzel? There's this new pretzel place out in the mall and you gotta go check it out. So I went out into the mall there was an uh, Auntie Anne's store and there was a line and uh, it kind of so how your I was CPA to it. kicked in in your brain, and you said, "I'm counting all these customers, and I'm counting all these pretzels." Well, it's definitely uh, an economically uh, viable business. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, simple. Um, it's really uh, and franchising works because of the structure. Uh, everyone knows is that uh, you know most 90% uh, of all small businesses really tend to fail in the first five years, um, whereas uh, a statistic I think over 90% of all franchises succeed and that's because of the uh, control uh, the structure and the procedures that are put into place uh, you know what your costs are you know where uh, all your your labor factors should be did you make this pretzel mm -hmm. did you ever have to go to the bank for a loan because you're out on the edge yes. too far yes we did we did and we went to the bank for loans and they didn't like the amount of money that we were giving so they wouldn't give us the loan you were giving away too much money yes right they so, said to you now look Ann if you'd stop giving that money away, we would make you a loan. Basically, that's what they said, yeah. And what did you say back? And I said, well, you don't understand that this company was born to give. And I'm not going to give at the expense of paying my suppliers and my employees. But I'm not in the company to become wealthy. I'm in this to give money away. But anyway, we found a, uh, a chicken farmer uh, that was introduced to us. And uh, he has given us all the money we need to this day. Wait a minute. So wait a minute. Is this is somebody we would call an angel in oh, in, yeah. in the finance business? Yes, he is an angel, All and right. he would do business on a handshake if that's what we wanted to do. But how did you find him? Um, a friend of ours said uh, gave us his name and said he's he's got lots of money and and he likes Auntie Anne's. Maybe you should call him and see if he's interested in. Is he close in, by this vicinity? Uh -huh. He lives in this area. So you could go see him in person. Oh yeah. And you could go say here are the financials. Here's why the banks yes. told us no. Oh yes. And you did that and he said okay and gave you a check for yes. a million dollars. He he didn't know me from. He didn't know who I was. I didn't know him from like a longtime friend. It was just someone that in we were introduced meeting. to in one meeting. Oh yeah. I believe I, I'd have to or maybe two uh, but yeah we talked a time or two and so has it been a good investment for him oh yeah he's he's a wonderful man but I mean he's what? making oh, yeah. money oh yes of course of course he's two. he loans us the money it's not in, he's not part of the he's not partnership or does right. not have any stock but he gets a percentage it's like my bank Just, right. he's your bank oh yeah mm -hmm. the chicken farmer bank uh-huh he's wonderful. my banker the chicken farmer yes so there are no limitations. When you go into business, you know, you got to look beyond the norm. The concept of giving, the power, the force behind giving. I, I can't explain that. But there, there's something 
in, in wrapped into that word of giving that, that there's really no explanation, but I can say that it works. All right, well, let's show me and how to do this. I'll show you how to make a pretzel. Okay, so and I, it's I not would impossible. I would expect you to learn how after about the third pretzel. Really? That fast? Well, we'll just see how good you, okay. I mean, we'll see. Okay, I better, I better do this. Okay, now stop it. You've had how many years of experience? And I've had five, two minutes. Chance. Look at her, she's moving right along here. Now, is it is it proprietary information? Whoa, it did not go on the floor. <laughs> it fell oh, off. Look at, you're getting there. But I, I'm gonna hire her right on the spot. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Look at that. Is that good? Was that really good? Yay. Now, then you gotta do the twist. Okay. It's like lassoing a pole. You take this and, and you hold, hold this, still. hold it still, and then you bring this around and you're lassoing this. So just like this. And do you know what the pretzel stands for, the holes in it? No. This represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because these pretzels were given as little rewards when people learn how to say their prayers. And when they folded their arms like this in prayer, that's what your pretzel looks like, see? Had, but you had started it to fund your husband's ministry, yes. and then you found out it had a spiritual yes, background. Yes, exactly. And so I said, hey, with, a, with a, a product like this, it has to be blessed. And it surely, it surely is blessed. Yes. Amazing. It's part of the miracle. I believe that if you start your business with a purpose, um, and your purpose may be to, to give to a certain cause or whatever, start do that. Um, I think if you treat other people the way you want to be treated and put others first and yourself last, I believe that if you seek to understand and then to be understood first, seek to understand first and then to be understood is very important. I believe that you can go the second mile in business in the 90s and be successful. Um, I think that you can take love into the workplace and make it a place where people love to come to work and enjoy each other. And people say, love in the workplace? <sighs> yeah, it, it, it works. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's basic, it's very um, maybe old fashioned, but I think without those ingredients in the workplace, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that that's what will make you successful. Without it, yes, you may make money, but you won't feel the sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. Start with a wow product that sells itself. Put systems in place, add good people who want to do good things, and watch the profits pile up. Making money is just not a good enough reason for Ann and the team at Auntie Ann's to come to work. Ann's CFO, CPAs, and bankers measure success with dollar signs, but it is producing good feelings that matter most to the hundreds of franchise owners and the corporate support staff. Ann has built a business that is on the way to $300 million in sales because she put people and their feelings above profits. At smallbusinessschool.org, there is self-help study for people who want to start a business and for those who want to grow the business they have. To learn more about this episode, choose the overview. You can read every word you're hearing today when you choose the transcript and go deeper with the case study. There's streaming video and access to interactive study guides throughout the site. Padre, coming out. To, to really structure what we wanted to do was something that I didn't know how to do. So we had to go outside. And uh, first of all, I had my youngest brother actually had gone to school for a uh, business school. And so he came in and really helped put, uh, departmentalize uh, the organization. Mm -hmm. And from there, we went to Francorp, which was a, uh, a company based out of uh, Chicago, Illinois. They are a franchise consulting company. Mm -hmm. And they helped us with, they took our licensing agreement um, to a, an official franchise agreement, which was a, a great help. And which you really need that. If you're going to franchise, you really need to have the documentation in place. Mm -hmm. And you need to have an agreement that is, is good for you and it's good for the customer, for the franchisee. Yeah. 
And in this agreement, you need to make sure that you're protected, but you also need to make sure that the franchisee is protected from, uh, from the franchisor, because it's a really a two-way street. Right. And so if you understand franchising, you have to, a good way to understand it is to see it as a partnership for the rest of your life, or like a marriage. Once we taste the product. For every 500 people who want to buy a franchise, only one is given the opportunity. See, you watch them see the expression on their face. They go, wow, you know, That's That's wow. the first thing. So part yeah. of your success pattern, I'm hearing, is you say no to a lot of things. Yes, we do. It's, it's very important to me, as the founder and as the owner of the company, that you do well. It's, 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 it's all about doing good and doing well and helping other people achieve right. that. It's, right. it's more about that than it is about selling a franchise and putting profits in the company. It, right. it's, that, that we're in it for the long haul, for the long, the, the big picture, and for 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, we want to be in business. Why do you think you don't have to go after the franchise, the potential franchisees? Why do you think they're coming after you? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I, let me go back a little bit to my personality. I'm not a salesperson. And if you don't want what I have, I'm not going to sell it to you. I just, I can't. I, I, that's just not my style. Um, so it's a good thing that our product sold itself. So for us, the way it's worked is the people have called us after they've tasted the product, literally. Do you want to blaze on a reason? Uh, yeah. We have all kinds of people in our franchise organization. And I think when, what works for us is we're looking for people who want to follow the system. So what we're looking for is an A student or someone that in, in the lifetime of their education, they did exactly what the teacher asked them to do. What do the great managers do? What do the great franchisees oh do? Goodness. It's very simple. It's just be nice to your customer. I mean, there's a lot of stuff within that, but it's just be nice to your customer. How many times do you go back to a place where you buy food, you want to treat yourself, mm -hmm. go to a nice restaurant, maybe you're in the mall, you want to buy a pretzel or a piece right. of pizza, and, and the service is... Right. Right. I don't care if you're here or Are not. Are you going to go back there? No. You're right. I'm telling you, being kind to people is one of the greatest motivators to success. It's, it's that simple. Right. And so, I know that sounds, you know. It sounds corny. That, <laughs> but but it, the other, the other but, thing it sounds is it sounds impossible. It sounds but, hard. Because as a leader then, I have to teach people how to be nice. Right. <laughs> that is hard. But I think that, again, that's where leadership and training. If you want results, you have to first of all walk the talk, and then you have to train people. Hi. How y'all doing? What you're looking for, though, is for somebody that, can you actually teach these people to do this? I mean, and that's all in the attitude. So I will put up with a lot of nonsense, <laughs> and maybe even some inabilities, if I know that person really wants to learn. Oh, yeah, gold in the ground. Yes. Cheerio. You know how to do that. You know, but just have a heart for what do your people want? I mean, right. listen to your people in your story. How are you doing? Be nice to them. Come in with a cheerful good morning. How are you? Don't be their boss. Yeah. You know, be somebody that interacts with them and connects with them and mm -hmm. communicates with them and let them know what you're up to. and. Right incentivize them or do whatever it need, you, you need because people are looking for a nice place to work. Gone are the days of I'm the boss and you're my employee. Right, right. It's just not, it doesn't work anymore because employees demand more. My vision for the future is number one to stay in business. <laughs> we want Auntie Anne's to be here long after we're gone. And it's easy to start a business but I think it's harder to, to keep a business thriving and successful because you have to make so many changes along the way to, to keep it fresh and vibrant. What I decided to do was, was select uh, carefully key leadership and let them, allow them to actually run and uh, they need to do their jobs in their departments. I want to I wanna give you a bite of this one. This is the way you eat. Auntie Ann Pretzel. I'm still part of the, the, the decision-making process at Auntie Anne's, but I'm not operationally involved in each department like I was 10 years ago. Right. I mean, you can't be. No. 
But what's tempting is for you as, a, as the founder is to say, I don't like what you did. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so I want to get involved. Get in there and muddle it That's up. That's right. I can't do that anymore. Yeah. So we're, we're putting together a team. We have a, a great team in place mm -hmm. um, to, to carry Auntie Anne's to the next level. Well, when I began in 1989, uh, it just looked like an opportunity that my wife and I were pretty excited about. And Sam Byler became president of Auntie Anne's in 2000. Uh, you know, at that point, it was in the very early stages, and I was uh, really focused on entrepreneurial efforts, and, and there was a lot of room. The systems weren't established yet, and there was a lot of room for that, uh, for that creative energy. So he's been in every, every phase of the business all along the way. And so I, we chose him because uh, we trust him, which is mm -hmm. critical. Huge. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> if you don't trust, your foundation is going to just, Crack. it's going to crumble. Mm -hmm. I think that the, uh, the strongest link between Ann and I is trust. And, and uh, some of that comes about because uh, my, my focus for years has been to, to learn what's important to Ann and Jonas and, and then live that. Um, I have tremendous freedom within the job to do what needs to be done for the business. Uh, but it's all built on a, on a foundation that, that recognizes uh, what Ann and Jonas have brought to the company uh, as the founders and, and to, to keep applying that and keep trying to train that and, and, uh, and use influence to, to lead others to follow in that same way. Uh, so a lot of it's based on trust. That's what it comes back to. You know, with Ann and her focus on the mission and the vision, um, the purpose, the philosophy of the company, uh, takes away the pressure, the short-term decision-making pressure that, that so many companies, public companies especially, uh, are under. Her focus is on people, on creating opportunities for people, and in the meantime, we're running a very profitable company. It's a hard place to get to, I mean, really, because I'm hands-on. I mean, sitting here talking to me, you can't see that, but that's the way I grew up. I mean, you do it yourself. And if it's going to get done, you're going to have to do it. So, so my mind shift has been major in the way I think today about getting the job done versus 15 years ago when, when I was completely hands-on. The future is full of more pretzels and more wow products, like Criamo, a frozen custard delight that I got to taste. I'll let you taste it. Okay, yeah. okay. Sure. You like peach, that's... Mmm. 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 Okay, more good stuff for uh -huh. Annie When did you come up with light? light? What is it, what does it mean, and how do you use it to guide you and motivate the whole team to go in the right direction? Well, light. We had a, a mission statement, and it was kind of, it was cumbersome. We decided that, well, why don't we do something to where that everybody can memorize our purpose. What is our purpose? And I'd always said that my purpose, I feel like our purpose, Auntie Anne's, is to be a light in the business community. Mm -hmm. And so we sat around the table. This was at the time when I was still part of the management team. And, and we came up with the acrostic light, you know, I-G-H-T. And, and this came from the employees. So it was, we all put the ideas all together, and, and this is what they came up with. So I think it's just the greatest thing is I always lead by example. I is invest in others. Uh, G is give freely, H honor God, and T is treat all business contacts with respect or treat all people with respect. Yeah. So it's very easy and it's really, it's very catching. Yeah. Uh, the franchisees, many of them use it um, and how we use it in, in, our, in, uh, in our decision making process is everything that it goes through this grid, does this, does this fit with our statement of purpose of light? So every decision we make, we, we try to um, make sure that it it's filters, through. filters through that. <laughs> yes. But it has to pass the light test. Exactly. There you go. You're exactly right. You know, after 15 years, I still like Auntie Anne's pretzels. Can you believe that? You oh, it's absolutely a miracle. Uh, there's no other word that I can describe that because I've had people tell me early on um, that you shouldn't be doing this. I mean, I understand I shouldn't be, but I am. I'm still amazed. I mean, every day, I honestly, if you know my life, <laughs> if you understand where I came from, you will have to admit this is a miracle.
Building a business that can be passed to new leadership to carry forward is nearly impossible. Anne's done it, and we agree with her that making money is too small of a goal to be attractive to most people. Find a big idea, a big purpose, a perfect product, and people. Then profits will follow. I'll see you next time. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.